Michigan's Republican majority just canceled a law that allows state's governor, Democrat Gretchen Whitmer, to impose a lockdown. However, the war for independence did not end here. Residents of the state are anxiously awaiting a new initiative for Democratic Washington to bring back the mask regime and quarantine. If those measures return, they will raise the question of leaving the United States. Michigan Republican leader Michael Maddox spoke about this openly. Never before the idea of disintegration been so popular in the States. No, seriously, let's go for a year or two, we'll live separately, says host of the satirical show on Fox News, Craig Gutfield. The Democrats will do their own stuff, Republicans will do their own, let's see who does better. Guests in the studio had a good laugh, but they have very occasion for that. They discussed the results of poll according to which almost half of the Americans proved the idea of disintegration of the States from the United States. A few years ago, the very word succession was considered indecent in good society. It was used only by most intuitive survivors with full catch of trunks and stewed meat, like radio ghost Rush Limbo. And today, here you are, on the most popular TV channel, discussions of disintegration of the United States on the full swing. Music Magazine has already published a map of the future of North America. It united the Republican states with the conservative provinces of Canada under the name. United States of America and Democratic with progressive ones, so we have the United States of Canada. The United States will ban abortion and abolish gay marriage, the United States of Canada will legalize legal substances and will allow anyone to marry anyone. In fact, the idea is not new. Back in 2016, after Trump won the presidential election, Democratic California started talking about leaving the United States in all seriousness. They even came up with the name of the process, call exit. Now, five years later, Republicans want to leave and around 66% of Republican Americans living in the south of the United States support the independence of the states from the federal center. In fact, due to poor control of Washington, chaos in American life has reached such proportions that different states are already acting like independent countries. They pursue independent policies, quarrel with the neighbors, and definitely ignore the White House. Republicans in Texas legislature are already trying to pass a voting procedure this amazing innovation requires to prove voter his identity on the election day. Texas Democrats see this as an ugly violation of human rights, however, they are in the minority, both in the Senate and in Congress. The law is simply doomed to pass. The Senate working on accepting it, but once it comes to Congress, Texas Democrats flag like a wedge to Washington. There is no quorum in Texas Congress, so the law has no chance to pass. In Washington, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, instead of explaining to party members that they shamelessly violated the law and not fulfill their duties, fully approves the demolish. The governor of Texas, Republican Greg Abbott, sends law enforcement to runaway Democrats to arrest the fugitives and bring them back to the Senate by force. Unfortunately, Texas Rangers don't have that kind of authority outside the state. Democrats promise to stay in Washington until the end of August, until the very end legislative session in Texas. They are strongly supporting this by President Biden, a man who should somehow monitor the implementation of the country laws. It's no wonder that in that kind of mess Texans want to make Texas. Why do we need a federal government? asked Daniel Miller, head of Texas National Movement and Texas activist. We have ours. The Texas range will be our FBI and Texas military will organize self-defense force. This is not to mention the fact that with a GDP $1.7 trillion, Texas is the tenth economy in the world, ahead of Canada and Australia. Some other states now have their own immigration policies, completely independent from Washington. Every day there are calls from Washington to let as many immigrants as possible into the country to help them, to groom and cherish them. Democratic California sheriffs do just that. On the Mexican border of the states of Texas and Arizona, local armed police with tough guys, former military and security officials hang from head to toe with firearms, hunt illegal immigrants like rabbits, and eliminate smugglers and drug carriers from the south. Washington can't do anything about it. The relations between Democrat and Republican states are not at the best. The ideological gap between them is deeper than Grand Canyon. Recently, the authorities of Democratic California confirmed their ban on government employees and students from traveling for budget money to states where LGBT rights were offended. There are 17 states on the list, all of them, of course, Republican. Last year, Oklahoma responded by banning non-essential trips for its officials to California. Otherwise, you never know. You might come back being different in orientation, or even gender. Of course, it's still a long way from border closure. 
but all these unfriendly gestures inevitably remind the state, translated into Russian, is both state and country. Each has its own boundaries, its own legislative bodies, and its own security forces. Now, at any moment, all this can gain some independence. The conservative state of Florida, the original fortress of Republicans, also in the California stop list. However, it was not even noticed here. The state of Florida has been actively engaged in foreign policy in recent weeks. Firstly, people who were working on planning the association of Haitian President Moise Chavanel were in Miami. Secondly, leading local politicians are closely engaged in Cuba. They are sponsored by local activists, stirring up the local uprising, demanding Washington to intervene immediately, and from Pentagon to send bombers. Local oligarchs, senators, and congressmen, as well as Haitian and Cuban communities, and their authoritative leaders are actively involved in the movement. Flat reaction from the White House combined with all these foreign policy multi-moves turned out to be a total surprise from the country's leadership. The Federal Center has little understanding of what is happening in Haiti and has absolutely no plans to invade Cuba. All this is an absolute demonstrative amateur performance of Miami. Of course, this chaos has objective reasons. The federal structure of the country a split at the top and obviously a weak president has very little support. For example, Germany is also a federation where president is even less power, but at the same time Bavarian authorities do not arrange revolution in a series of murders in Liechtenstein, and leadership of the Rhine Palatine state is not trying to chop off Alsace and Laurent from France behind Bernal's back. Americans themselves describe relationship between the red and blue states as marriage without love. More and more often, the metaphor of divorce comes to mind. Stop hitting the plates. It's time to divide shared property, concludes Democratic writer Paul Vandervelde. We'll take New York, Hawaii, and West Coast, and Northeast. You'll get Texas, Mississippi, the Confederation. We have Bill and Hillary, Woody Allen, and Mel Streep, you, Mitch McDonnell, Fox News, and Sarah Palin. Us, Disneyland and Hollywood, you, Babsis, and Tornadoes. Divide the Grand Canyon in half. Let Alaska go to whoever he wants. We, lobster, cheese, wine, you, corn, fried chicken, and dumplings. In telling Google, for us, Halliburton and Delft for you. And finally, we will keep all our taxes. And for once, you will have to pay for everything on your own. It was written nine years ago, and the author was real, divine oracle. Today, more and more state governments are acting, as if the United States of America were indeed entering the last stage of their existence. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell.